Hello, everybody. Welcome to Death Ground Reviews, the monster that devours horror, suspense, and all those things, the fantastic. So uh, I, I want to mention, guys, that I just recently got a book review up. I've been reveling with these blood suckers here, Salem's Lot by Stephen King. Check out that video. And uh, today, I've got a special guest. Um, so this, this is a horror author. He's the author of Rose, uh, The Pure World Comes. Um, he's the one and only Rami Unger. Rami, welcome. Tell us a little about yourself. Hey, everyone. My name's Rami Unger. I'm a horror novelist from Columbus, Ohio. I've written uh, four and published four books. Got a fifth one on the way. Uh, Alan mentioned a few. Uh, uh, Rose and the Pure Old Comes. And hopefully, uh, my writing career has been going very well lately. So I hope that continues. I hope to be able to bring more tales of the dark and the macabre to people and that they like them. Awesome, sir. Well, thank you for joining me, Rami. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so today, so we recently watched a horror movie. This is one that's new to me. I've actually never heard about it till just recently. It's The Prince of Darkness, directed by John Carpenter. This came out back in 1987. And uh, to give a little synopsis about it, so it's about, you know, we got these grad students. They're physicists. They're microbiologists, theologists. They're, they're brought on by this uh, priest to come to this monastery and investigate this strange prebiotic liquid. It's the swirling liquid in this weird cylinder thing. And um, it's basically, my understanding, it's kind of an embodiment of Satan. Would you say that about right, Rami? I would say more like Satan's physical form. Satan's physical form, all right. And um, as they're investigating this, at one point, this, this liquid shoots out of this cylinder into one of the, the Lady Susan, it was, into her mouth. And um, it basically turns you into this weird zombie-like creature being controlled by this, by Satan. And essentially they go around spreading it about, turning others into zombies. And he's trying to basically attain power over these people too. My understanding, this was a really unique aspect of it. He's trying to bring aboard its ancestor, sort of, they suggest the father of Satan, this extraterrestrial into their- Anti-God. Anti-God, that's right. Yeah, like it's a, a very Gnostic concept. Concept. I don't know if you know who the Gnostics were. They were a uh, very early um, breakaway. I don't know if they were how they were related to Christian in theology. I just know that they were related to the Abrahamic religions, and they were like a breakaway groups that believe that um, God, the Creator God, was really evil, and that Satan might have been like misunderstood. It's a very much Modern concept is very interesting, but yeah, that's a very uh, Gnostic idea that say Eaton uh, is trying to bring a sort of evil anti god into this world onto our plane of existence, and they mix it with a lot of science fiction terminology and ideas, which I like dark matter, or yeah. which I find very interesting. That's one of the things I love about this movie, it has so many great ideas. and. And uh, yeah, it's not perfect, but it has so many great concepts and ideas. It really gets you thinking, which you don't normally associate with horror movies. They, uh, they're philosophical. They never really dis uh, sparks philosophical debates. And as you said, uh, not a lot of, you have never heard of this film. And I think it's really sad. John Carpenter is one of the best uh, horror directors out there. And Honestly, I think this is um, an underappreciated masterpiece of his. So I feel like it's very sad that not a, enough people will know about it. I mean, hell, Jordan Peele well, basically said, don't blaspheme John Carpenter when someone suggested he was one of the greatest horror directors of our time. So I feel like this movie deserves more recognition than it gets. Well, you just answered a question I was going to ask because you had meant you had suggested this movie and you had and you had said it's one of your favorites. I was going, man, I wonder why 
This is one of Rami's favorites. And that's, that's partly why you love the philosophical angle along with the emotional horror aspect. The, both layers are playing with the audience there. Yeah, it's a very creative uh, movie. It's, uh, and yeah, the characters are kind of, uh, there are kind of stock figures, but you do actually end up liking a lot of them and caring for them. And you do like uh, how they, this, they sort of, have to confront their own beliefs their own faith even if they are atheists they have to sort of confront their own ideas of reality of faith of the world yeah and and bringing science and religion into that and then they're being forced to face uh basically the physical embodiment of satan who is nothing like they expected it's a movie that really gets you to think. I've heard all sorts of uh, commentary about how it's there are like underlying themes of uh, like fears of homosexuality and the AIDS epidemic. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see how that uh, comes in with the uh, how they spread Satan's essence. It's really with essences, yeah, with fluids. <laughs> I mean, if that's not an AIDS reference, I I don't know what is, and, and it kind of taps into that fear. Absolutely. Um, another thing I, yeah, that one element you touched on there that I thought was fascinating as well was how yeah you had these atheist scientist characters, and then you had the religious characters, but they weren't clashing with one another so much as they became sort of a team. You know, they became a team coming together to battle against this this evil embodiment. And I was like, wow, that is a really fun angle that I don't see as often. And they didn't even believe, they were totally, they didn't, they weren't even sure what they were dealing with. They were like, okay, I'm getting this weird feeling. And this priest is telling us this is sick, possibly Satan. And he wants us to kind of prove it so that he can warn people that the end of the world is nigh. But it's, uh, uh, I don't know what to make of this. There's got to be a scientific explanation. Maybe it's just some uh, goop that it uh, somehow affects the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. And that's why we're uh, feeling so weird because we're, we're getting all these, um, per, uh, what are the, the, we're getting Wi Fi allergies. <laughs> you know, I, and, there's some characters I really loved. I love seeing Donald Pleasance again in this film. So he was the psychiatrist in Halloween, wasn't he? Yeah, he played Dr. Loomis. In this film, he's just known as the priest. Right. He has a lot of similar characteristics to the psychologist in, in Halloween. Almost kind of the same character, but then just put in the priest position. But he plays that character so well. He has that interesting, almost semi trans look on his face all the time and how he speaks and a sense of importance to him throughout the film. And, and he's also struggling with his faith. He's yeah. realized he basically discovers that this end of the world prophecy is coming to pass and with it a lot of stuff that he took for granted, a lot of stuff he took on faith is actually out of order. It's not real or it's been missed uh, or he's misunderstood it for basically his entire life there's and he's like how do i reconcile my faith uh, as a catholic priest with all this new information which based on what i've found i have to accept as true right and um were there any other actors that were getting a second role from past movies in this one I think a lot of the actors in this film um, were in past uh, John Carpenter films. Donald Pleasance is the only one I'm absolutely sure of. Yeah, I, I can tell you, though, that uh, of the characters, my favorite is probably Walter, you know, the uh, guy who's constantly making wisecracks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just love him. He is so funny and he it's not forced at all he's just this wise ass dude dude uh who makes fun of the who's 
basically openly gay or bisexual. It's never really clear, but and he just flunk. He just is unafraid of mentioning uh, his attraction to who, uh, men, as well as making jokes that from anyone else would have come off as really, really awful, sometimes even offensive. But when he does it, it's actually kind of funny. I laughed so hard at that one joke where he told where uh, he tells his joke where or a woman, a Jewish woman goes to meet her daughter at the airport. The daughter brings back a, a Zulu warrior and he, and she says, I said, marry a rich doctor and I'm <laughs> Jewish. So I'm used to hearing the stereotypes, but that still made me laugh. Oh yeah. That was a great moment. Great moment. Yeah, he does. It feels so natural to his character. The wise cracking. Hey, you gotta have, the humorous relief, you know, because you have all those tense, stressful moments, but that's what helps make it more impactful when you mm. have those little breaks of the humorous relief. So he's an important character to the story. Yeah, uh, he's so, so yeah, he's definitely my favorite. It, uh, did you have a favorite character am uh, among the cast? Oh, Donald Pleasance, the, the, the priest. Oh yeah, he's even he, he's my favorite character in Halloween too. I think he's a great actor, for sure. But but speaking of it, of so you mentioned a lot of the philosophical aspects. There's definitely some downright just scary images and horrifying stuff going on here. A lot of stuff with those bugs, those black little beetles things. Oh yeah, skin flowing, huh? and those worms, those maggots. Yeah. Yeah. Satan is a, a it's hinted, if not outright stated, that Satan is able to control very simple organisms or organ or anyone with a very disturbed mind. He takes over a lot of homeless schizophrenics. He, yeah. By the and, way, Alice Cooper was in there. Yes. <laughs> I love that fact. That Alice was Cooper was in the film. He had a cameo as one of the possessed schizophrenics. Right. And, and I don't know. If you realize, but one of the characters, when he gets killed by the a homeless, he's listening to an Alice Cooper song. I think it's the yep. very song Cooper wrote for this film. It was, yep. <laughs> interesting. Was just a very scary moment. Interesting side fact. I have to bring it up because I'm a little annoying that way. But so when, you know, when Alice Cooper's character stabs that guy that's listening to the song and yeah. then the blood's like oozing out of his lips. So I just found out, I was watching an interview with a, a doctor. He was a medic on the, in the army. He says that that doesn't actually really happen. He says, I dealt with soldiers that got shot in the abdomen or stabbed in the abdomen or stomach. He says, I've never seen blood ooze out of the mouth. And yeah, theatricality. Yeah. The it was creepy, though. It was darn creepy. But um, Oh, man. And then there's Kelly, the character Kelly. So she's the one that she gets like the most deeply possessed and infested. Oh yeah, I yeah she uh, he gets this mark on her early on. She gets this weird bruise, and it turns out to be this magical symbol. And that's another thing I love how seamlessly it it feels like they mix religion and occultism and philosophy, he, and science, and she gets this magic. Mark is this occultic mark associated with her on her bruise, and that basically marks her as the one Satan is going to make his main vessel. Ah, that's what it means, right? Yeah, it was, and it was just a very, it was amazing uh, seeing her transformation. I mean, she goes to sleep, Satan in, it possesses her, and uh, the her body undergoes this transformation and that goes back to the whole AIDS uh, uh, metaphor or analogy because she her body, because AIDS can produce some really nasty uh, infect, well, a side effect of AIDS is oh, a right. bunch of really nasty infections that are like carcinomas and her skin's like peeling off and Oh, yeah, that's something you could you sometimes see with AIDS patients when they're really far gone, when their immune system is totally shot. Right. That is a, that definitely fits the angle. Wow. 
Yeah. And I like also like the whole uh the dream aspects. Like every time they sleep, they all start having the same dream because they're in proximity to uh, the to Satan's uh form. So they're get all getting this dream predicting future events. And then you only really see the full message, what's being sent to them um, at the very end. And it just does not bode well. No. That galley loved turned out to be a form coming out, or at least that's how he sees it. Or is it sort of a reflection that that evil exists in all of them? Is it an interpretation that way, you think? Or? I don't know. It's a... Uh... I do believe evil exists in all of us. I do tend to think that humanity is a basically very selfish species at heart. And I'm told being very selfish is a form of evil, but yeah. I think it was just, I think that very, that ending was just um, um, one more twist to really hammer home the horror. Right. And the fact that the apocalypse is uh going to happen one way or another still pending and then you know i think about it there's a lot of mirrors in the movie and yes that, that in a sense reflects what you were just saying of the evil existing and inside all of us or the other that other that still exists within us you know as well as the division of like matter antimatter, good evil life death yeah science religion it's a movie of divisions and of of opposites having to coexist exactly i'm just realizing that now yeah it really is a film about um about opposites and how sometimes they have a lot more in common than you would think look at that yeah fruitful discussion it can lead to new ideas eh yeah you know i would love to bring to show this film to some of my old professors in college. I had a professor who did a history of witchcraft um, class. I would love to show this film to him. And there are professors who would do like all sorts of, who would specialize in all the different forms of Christian philosophy. Yeah, I would love to show this film to them because there, this film has a lot of ideas that were actually present in certain forms of Christianity, yeah, or debates at the very end as well. Like, is Satan and demons a physical form? That was a huge debate throughout Christianity, and the the answer changes depending on what you were, what time, some folk. Some people think demons are just spirits. If so, how can they have sex with, with mortals? What's going on? How does that work? If demons are impregnating women, how does that work if they're just spirits? So I would love to see what um, someone whose whole area of studies like Christian philosophy and theology would make of this film. Yeah, it'd be fun, interesting to see if you showed it to various professors of yours and their specialties and what kind of angle and ideas that would add to it. Absolutely. It'd be a fun discussion. I'm surprised there hasn't been a YouTube video about that. I mean, react videos are huge on YouTube, no matter what that seems to be uh, something that has not changed. The YouTube trends, tr <laughs> YouTube trends change all the time, but react videos remain popular and I'm still Oh, waiting to find someone who will do uh, who of that sort of leaning to do that kind of reaction bid. Huh. I haven't really looked in terms of the Prince of Darkness. Have you looked on there for like reviews of it, reaction videos? I have seen a couple of reaction and review videos, but nothing that I've come across that's more that delves very deeply into the philosophical uh, aspect. But I might look again. I've got a whole weekend ahead of me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, update me when you find out. So, mm. well, great guys. Um, this was a fun discussion. Thank you, Rami, for joining me. Let's do it again in the future. We yeah, let's. If if I uh, think of any films I think you would get a kick out of, and that deserve more um, more press, I'll let you know. I do have one to suggest for us next time. 
Ooh, what? It's, tell called, me, tell me, tell me. Near, it's called Near Dark, and it stars Bill Paxton. It's a vampire movie. Near Dark? I never heard of it. Yeah. Want to do that one next time? Sure. I'll see if I can find it. If we, awesome. if I get a copy and I watch it, I'll let you know. It sounds great. Yeah, guys. So we'll, we'll plan on watching Near Dark and discussing that next time. Today, we discuss The Prince of Darkness. John Carpenter's the director. Stars Donald Pleasance. And uh, it's a great movie. It's one of those. Yeah, totally really recommend. So, all right. Thank you very much, Rami. Thank you. And everyone listening, pleasant nightmares to you. Take care, guys. Mm-hmm.